everybody. Amen. Would you stand with me today? Glad to have Brother Plymouth with us today. Looking forward to his ministry today. But aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I am so thankful for the house of the Lord, the presence of God, the people of God. Amen. The peace, the love, the joy that it brings into our lives. And so today, I just want you to stand with me. I want you to open up your heart. Amen. I want you to open up uh, your spirit and just let God flow through you today and let God do a work in, among us. Amen. Praise God. So if you do that with me right now, let's raise our hands. Amen. And let's invite the presence of the Lord in this place. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful for your goodness today. Thank you for your spirit today. And we're asking for your blessings to flow in this service, God. And may our worship reach unto you, God. Lord, that you would inhabit the praises of your people today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We give you all the honor and all the glory today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship him together in song.
joy of the Holy Ghost to come over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me.
what you're about to do for us, Lord. We praise you now, Jesus. We bring you high praise, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. We lift up your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord, Jesus.
your name, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. The only living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you know that name today? Amen. Can you reach over and, and, and just pray with that one next to you right now? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Redemption. Yes. Healing in Jesus' name. Strength in Jesus' name. Rikala la bahaya rokotongo rokoranda ha. Oh, rikata la 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 tiando rokondo ya ha. Oh, strengthen my brother. Encourage my sister today, God. In your name I pray. You see their need today. You see what they're going through, God. Strengthen them. Encourage them in the faith right now. Let their faith be strong. Let their faith be strong, God, we pray. Oh, Jesus, in your name. Jesus, in your name. Let their commitment to you be strong today, God, I pray. In Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, let their devotion to you, God, be strong. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. God, in your name I pray. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. It is time for prayer. Today I feel led to pray for those that are on the fringes. Amen. You have friends. Uh, you have people you've invited. Uh, you have family. Amen. Possibly even backslidden at this moment. Uh, but I call them on the fringes. Uh, amen. We have people that's talked about getting baptized. Uh, we have one. Uh, I don't see her today. Uh, amen. But she's come faithfully for the last three weeks. Uh, what in deliverance. Uh, what in the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Talking about baptism. Amen. They're on the fringes. I want to pray. Amen. That they get off the fringes and into the church. Amen. Would you help me pray for that right now? In Jesus' name, you call out their names. You mention them before the the, 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 uh, the, the, the throne of God. Amen. Put their name before the throne of God right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, we come to you. You see those ones that you are working with. You see the ones that your spirit is drawing today, God. And they're just right there. God, just right there on the edge, God, of making that commitment to you and giving their life to you. And I pray in the Holy Ghost right now, God, that you would move upon them and bring them all the way in to the house of God. Bring them all the way back to you. Bring them all the way in to be born again of the water and of the Spirit, God, in your name. There's family. There's friends, God, Lord. There, there are people that we have been praying for, God. And in Jesus' name, God, I pray today that they would just surrender their whole life to you today. In Jesus' name, Miranda, God, Lord, the Dooley family, the Wilcox, God, Lord, the Roth family today, God. Lord, in your name, I pray. I pray for Josh today, God. Lord, in your name, draw them. God, draw them in. Bring them in all the way to your truth. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Troy, God, Justin, God, in Jesus' name. Oh, Heavenly Father, no man cometh unto you and that your spirit draws them. I pray that you would draw them in the Holy Ghost. Draw them with your love. Draw them, Lord God, Linda, today, God, in your name. Draw them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, somebody speaking tongues. Somebody pray in the Spirit right now. Oh, yes, we're interceding for souls. We're interceding for loved ones right now. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Yes, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We, ha we have, uh, amen, a petition before God who answers by fire, who answers by, by, by prayer, uh, that answers, uh, amen, by healing, that answers by deliverance, uh, that answers, uh, amen. We have a God. We have a God today. We give you praise and glory today. We magnify your name today, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I believe. I believe. Amen. Not no longer are they going to be on the fringes, but they're going to become pillars. Amen. For the kingdom of God in this hour. Amen. Church, your labor is not in vain. Amen. Your work and your faith is not in vain. Hallelujah. God is working. God is working. God is working. Praise God. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I can't let it go. I'm trying to move on. We have an evangelist. Amen. But I'm just wanting to help somebody right now. Amen. God can reach them. They're not too hard for God. It's not too hard for God. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all. That's not talking about you getting a Cadillac. That's talking about somebody coming to God. Family members. Amen. That you've been praying for. Amen. Amen. That you have been praying and praying and praying. Amen. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or even think according to the power that worketh in you. Oh, amen. Praise God. God is on the throne and able, more than able today. Praise God. Praise God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'll move on. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost though. Amen. And I want you to know God is doing a work. God has something to say to us today. Amen. So I'm going to move quickly. Brother, Brother Chantry, I'm going to move quickly today. I'm going to let you sit there. I'm going to move quickly today. Amen. Because I believe that we need to get the evangelist up because God has something for us. Amen. Today we're supposed to be the great reveal. Amen. Uh, of uh, move the mission. Amen. And, and so... Uh, I'm, I, I'm pastor, so I'm going to trump everybody. Amen. We're moving right to the evangelist. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I don't think, Sister Sarah, thank you. Amen. Beautiful display, and we will reveal that. Amen. And we do have announcements. Amen. And Chantry does a better job than I do. But be here Thursday night, 7 o'clock for prayer, 7.30 Bible study. Amen. There's mothers, uh, the, the ladies are meeting. Last chance to get in on that. You need to talk to Sister Carney after service. Talk to Sister Carney. Amen. If you want a discount to get in to the Women's Conference. Amen. Praise God. General Conference is on its way. Be praying for it. And we'll have more information for that. But I want to bring Brother Plemons right now. And I know we have offering and I know all that. Amen. But save your offer for after service. And we'll let you bring it up. But Brother Plemons, I feel in the Holy Ghost. You need to come right now. Let's do it. Amen. In Jesus' name. One of the great travesties of Pentecost is we get so comfortable with phraseology that we seldom consider what it actually means or what it's even saying to us. But when you're singing amen, it's just not a catchy phrase or a refrain. You're saying, Jesus, I agree. Come on, I agree that healing's got a name. I agree the word's got a name. I ag Does anybody agree with me yet? Huh. In the Old Testament, there's a couple of men who made some profound statements. And I would like to set out today to preach with those words in mind. Job penned in Job 23 and verse 11. My foot, would you say that with me? My foot, come on, let, it, let, let that visualize. My foot. If you don't get this, I should have just gone ahead and stayed in Albany. My foot hath held his steps. 
Job said, my foot hath held his steps, his way have I kept, and not declined. When the going got tough, come on, when the hill got high, and the valley got low, Come on, in the river got wide. Is anybody going to help me yet? Job said, I just kept making. An old prophet named Jeremiah, he declared, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Walk therein, and ye shall find Rest. I know I'm not the only guy in here that's sick and tired of being sick and tired. I am tired of getting up tired. Oh, we all go down tired. But you sleep 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, no matter how many hours, and you get up and you're still just, just oh man, I got to do this again. But they said, we will not walk therein. I have been heard to say, I give people good advice all the time. They seldom take it. Matthew 24 and 12, listen to these words. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Does anybody see a pattern emerging yet? I wish you'd just go ahead and say this. I'm still standing. The devil took his best shot. I'm still standing. The devil gave it everything he had. Here I am on Sunday afternoon. (laughs) Galatians 6 verse 9 says this. Let us not be weary. It is so painful to read this now that I have the revelation that I have. Let us not become weary in well-doing. Now that sounds like a ridiculous request. But after I did my research, what I came to understand and conclude is, the Apostle Paul said, on your best day, There's still a possibility. You're just going to get fed up. But, he says, for in due season we shall reap. Isn't that what Pastor's been talking about for the last 20 minutes? Is Is anybody ready to see a harvest? Is anybody ready to see... The key today is just don't quit. Don't throw in the towel now. Don't, 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 don't doubt now. And so I want to preach to us for the next little while. My foot. His steps. You going to help me today? Let's pray one more time. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to stand before this people. God, it is a privilege to be their evangelist today, and I pray that you would wrap a mantle of anointing about my mind. Let every word be a word of life and of liberty to the hearers in this room. Lift them, encourage them, strengthen them in the battle. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let's all just clap our hands and shout yes to the Lord.
those of you who are listening today, and I hope you all are, I've come to make just an absolute obvious, nothing like stating the obvious, but serving God is an endurance sport. I mean, you don't got to read much of the Bible to understand that the Lord was not recruiting sprinters. He's looking for some milers, some cross-country runners. In fact, if you look very close at the Word of God, it would seem that he had no intention of recruiting anybody. I mean, he just said stuff like, well, man's days are few and full of trouble. <laughs> oh, they hated me. They're going to really hate you. I'm just saying. <laughs> Not a very encouraging thought, is it? I'm sure glad I didn't quit there. See, I didn't come to present to you some bleak, weak, or insipid gospel, but I've come to tell you that our message is not a message of depression. It is a message of hope. Come on, we, we didn't come to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. We came to lift, to encourage. Come on, to give them a secret loophole so they can get out of their day of trouble. You can't be a sissy and live for God. I'm not trying to trigger anybody. But I'm just saying, you got to be tough. Come on, you got to get some thick skin. You got to get what my dad used to call stick to it. It's hard to even say, but it's you get it. Come on, you just got to keep hitting it. You just got to keep going. And so, when you began to survey the names of those in the book of Hebrews Hall of Faith, one thing is certain. And obvious for a person to make it to the kingdom of God, they had to be ready to be determined to endure. Now, the scripture is very plain, and it tells us openly that in the last days, that men will not endure sound doctrine. Come on, there, there's going to be a weakness in our culture. And everybody said, oh, yeah, we've noticed. I'm just, I'm just saying. We have lived long enough and become the generation upon whom the ends of the world have come. And everything you read about in your Bible, you are seeing lived out on the front line pages of every news article and Internet page and Google search. And I'm so sorry. You, you're expecting me to just wind up and holler at you for a few minutes. That'll come in here in a little bit later. I, I'm going to try to help us today. You need to understand that when you set out to live for God, there are some endurances that you're going to have to make. The first endurance I want to talk to you about today is enduring through persecution. Okay. I know nobody's got their head cut off lately in America. But don't you doubt that it's coming. We are becoming a more violent society. Violence seemeth to be the answer to everything in this next generation. And I'm just telling you, they have no value of life. It means nothing to them. Persecution's coming. And in your Bible, we see a very beautiful story play out in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. There's an old king, his name is Nebuchadnezzar, and, and he is so puffed up and so stuck on himself that he gives commandment and says, I want you to make me a, a statue of gold, make it look just like me. And we're going to make a law that every man has got to come. And when they see that statue, when they pass by that statue, they got to bow before my image. It worked real well for him. Till it came to three Hebrew boys, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, 
That, that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for all you Bible scholars. I got it. I, I know. That's one of my favorite lines, and I've been preaching that for years. Most people don't even know their Hebrew names. It's sad. When that image came and the music played, those three fellas said, oh, nope, not going to happen. Haven't you heard? Don't you understand what you're signing up for here? They're going to throw you into the fiery furnace. Well, they might. <laughs> but whether they do or they don't, <laughs> we still ain't bowing. And I love it. I love it because the king is absolutely dumbfounded. Yeah. I mean, when they come to him and say, hey, look, we got some fellows here that are refusing to bow. And they say, he says, well, who are they? He tell him who these three Hebrews are. What? Those are some of my best guys. I just promoted them to princes. Wait a minute. I just, I just gave them new offices. What do you mean? Bring them in here. They just don't understand. It's a, it's a language barrier. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. And so when they got before the very king, and he said, come on, guys. What are you doing? Just bow and get it over with. No, no, king. No, in fact, king, we're not even going to be careful about this. We're going to tell you straight up. We serve a living God. I wish somebody get ready. Surely by now you, my foot. God knew they were going to go to the fiery furnace. God knew where they were headed. In fact, he was so certain of it, he beat them to the punch. He was in there waiting on them. I'm just saying. When they finally threw them in, he was in there, and the only thing that the fire consumed was the ropes that had him bound. I'm talking about enduring persecution. I wish somebody would get ready to help me preach right here and just say it out loud. We got this. We got God on our side. If God be for us, who can be against us? We just got to keep our foot in Being a Christian today makes you a target. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to alarm anybody. Just, it's a fact. There was a time when everybody was a Christian, it seemed. And those that weren't were afraid to tell you, lest they get drugged to the altar at camp meeting. I'm just saying. But our population in our country today has swiftly transformed to an unchurched. Do you understand how many millions of people live in our country tonight that never go to church? Some of them have never been to church. Some of them get violently angry if you even talk to them about church. That's the world that we're living in. And the media, come on somebody, is constantly beating that same drum, demanding that we all bow at the altar of entertainment. And we as a church, as a one God apostolic movement, have got to make our minds up. We will not bow. We're not going to cave in. We're not. I just came here today believing. There was going to be at least one somebody's in this room that would be willing to stand and say, I will persevere. I have no quit in me. I have no intentions of quitting now. I have no, I, I, there is no way I'm ever going to turn my back on what I believe today. And so we must endure. The second endurance I want to talk to you about is personal. Not personal with me, but personal with all of us. And it's a personal distress. Nowhere else in the scripture is it recounted more vividly than in the book of Job. It was personal, folks. 
I mean, he wasn't just a target. He was the target. I mean, Satan. Come on, Slewfoot, old Lucifer himself. Targeted Job. And when he was through with Job, and he had done all that he could do. I mean, it is amazing how many people don't even know the story of Job anymore. I mean, when you say Job, they say, do you mean Job? (laughs) I'm preaching so good right now. I mean, we're living in a generation that don't know what a fax machine is. They asked a teenager the other day, do you know what a fax machine is? He said, oh, that's that thing you ask it a question and it tells you if it's a fact or not. Straight up. They said, do you know what dial-up is? Oh, that's when somebody has a real phone in their house and you call them up. And we can't understand why they don't get it. They can't do math. They can't make change. They were born with a calculator in their hand. Who who needs one in your head? I mean, I got a calculator. It's so sad. We, we fuss about grammar. I was talking to a fellow over in India one day. And I, he had a real heavy accent. I couldn't understand him very good. And so I said, sir, I said, I don't want to be offensive, but I'm having a hard time understanding you. Is there a chance that you have a supervisor or somebody that speaks better English so I can understand them? He said, sir, the problem is I speak perfect English. You don't speak English. Well, there's that. I'm just going to leave that laying for all you Oregonians. As the story of Job unfolds, and thing by thing is stripped from him, and with each moment, his life becomes less tolerable. Everything he cares about is utterly and completely destroyed. Except for one nagged woman. What? What did I say? I mean, what do you call a woman that says, curse God and die? Sounds like a nagger to me. Oh, it's getting so quiet in here. Well, you go read the book for yourself and come back and change my mind. And yet, with everything against him, with a target sign on his back, with his own wife wishing him dead. Now, folks, I'm not making that up. That's in your Bible. Just die already and get out of our misery so we can move on here. Now, now don't don't be too harsh on her. She was hurting, too. It was her kids, too. Her cattle, too. Her Some of the biggest mistakes we make, especially in ministry, is fail to realize that our wives bear wounds different than we do. They do tend to take it more personal. They do hold on a little longer. Or else maybe we just suffer in silence. Okay. It's got way too quiet in here. But Job maintains his integrity. Did you read that verse? He maintained his integrity. And he did it with this bold declaration. It's in your Bible. It's the 23rd chapter of Job. It's verse 8. Behold, I go forward. But he ain't there. I look back. 
couldn't perceive him. On the left hand, he didn't work. But I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right. And I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. For my foot hath held his steps. His ways have I kept and not declined. Now, folks, this is as plain as I can make it for you. This is what Job discovered. As long as I stay in step with him, he knows where to find me. He knows how to find me. He knows where I'll be. He knows where I'm at. He knows what I'm going through. He knows... Something about knowing that he knows. Somebody get ready to help me now. You're not in this by yourself. You're not going through this alone. God knows where you are. I'm trying to hurry on here, but I got to take this little dog trail. The Lord just nudged me to the right here. Sister Plymouth and I, we're going through one of the darkest hours of our life. She had been diagnosed with cancer in my absence. I was in California. She was in Texas. And uh, the first thing that they told her, uh, they came back and said, oh, we're sorry. We shouldn't have told you that. We made a mistake. But you do have. And the second prognosis was worse than the first. And again, I wasn't there. No insurance, no money, and we're parked in the high desert of West Texas in the church parking lot, and we're staring at a multi $19,000 hospital bill. They've already sent me a pre. I said, are you expecting me to produce this money before the surgery? Because if that's the case, you can cancel the surgery now because there's no way that's going to happen. She said, oh, no, sir. She said, we just do that so you don't have any surprises. We want you to know about what it's going to cost. I said, well, thank you for that. So now I know after her surgery, I'm going to have at least a $19,000 hospital bill. And I'm sitting in my trailer. <laughs> I answer that door. It's a church secretary. She said, Brother Plymouth, a lady came by and asked me to give you this. It's just a little white, nondescript envelope with Plymouth on there. No address, no stamp, just Plymouth. So I opened the envelope. Sister Plymouth is sitting there with me. and We fold out. There's this little white sheet of paper and said, God told me to give you this. It was a $20 bill. Okay, let that settle on you. That was Sister Plymouth's exact response. <laughs> Crickets, as they say. And she said, well, I guess that ain't going to go very far. I, I, pro, folks, I'm just telling you the Holy Ghost, okay? In that very moment, God reminded me of when Sarah laughed. And the Holy Ghost came on me, and my righteous indignation rose up. And I turned around, I said, woman, don't you understand what just happened? She said, I don't have a clue what just happened. I said, God just sent me a little note to say, when it's time, I know your address. I know where you are. We You want to hear the rest of the story? She had the surgery. It was 100% successful. And the day after surgery, I was in her room. She was unconscious. Knock, knock, knock. Little, little, little guy, blonde hair, blue eyed, and handsome young man. Mr. Plymouth, hope it's not a bad time. Could I talk to you down the hall for a minute? Okay. We went down and sat in that little room, just me and him. He said, sir, I don't want to be uh, imprudent. I don't want to impose here. He said, but we've been looking at your case, and, and we actually ran your credit. 
And we can see that, that this, this bill is going to be beyond you. And if you would be willing to sign this piece of paper, sir, we're going to take care of this bill for you. Pastor, I never got a bill in the mail. I don't even know how much it actually wound up. I don't know the real number. They never sent me a bill. My foot hath kept his steps. As long as I stay in step with the king. I have nothing to worry about. Oh, you know what? I, what am I doing here? I'm talking about enduring personal distress. I was sitting in a evangelist quarters in Bellflower, California. I just packed up my goods and I was getting ready to go. I was flying home. I'd been in California for a couple of weeks. Sister Plemons had a surgery scheduled three days removed. And my phone rang. And it was a little lady from the doctor's office who's doing the back surgery. And she said, Mr. Plemons, I hate to bother you, but we are going to have to cancel this surgery. Now, we had worked for three months setting this up, getting my schedule cleared, buying plane tickets, Getting hotel rooms pre I mean, we had done a GoFundMe to kind of support me during the time I was going to be off with her. And they're telling me, we're going to cancel this surgery. I said, oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, I don't know why you think that, but that's just not going to work. You, you can't cancel this surgery. I've got too much riding on this. Every she will well, sir, we don't really have any authority. The insurance company has not approved the surgery, and we can't move forward until they do. You have got to call this number. Well, I called that number, and it was a lady I'd never met or talked to, didn't know her. Her name was Vivian. Vivian began to explain to me, oh, yes, sir, when you signed up for the insurance back in January, now that was eight months ago, okay, you agreed to this process uh, when you have these kinds of surgeries you have to come to us and we've got special doctors and special facilities and and I said ma'am this is the first I've heard of this I don't have a clue what you're talking about I said but let me tell you this I've done the research I've got the number one back surgeon in Texas lined up to operate on my wife I've got my plane tickets bought I've got her off time scheduled I've got my time scheduled ma'am th this is not going to work for us there's got to be a way to fix this she said well Mr. Plemons there is a loophole but I will have to meet with my team and make an exception to get Blue Cross Blue Shield to house this. I said, ma'am, you meet with your team, and I'm going to do what I do. She said, what do you do? I said, I pray. I hung up with Vivian, and I called John Coopley, who's my pastor there in California, and I said, you got to pray for me right now. I'm about ready to lose my mind. I explained to him what was happening, and we were both literally praying in tongues when my phone started beeping, and it was Vivian calling back less than five minutes later. She said, Mr. Plemons, I met with my team, explained to them what you do and how it works. And, and she said, we've agreed that you are the exception that they made this rule for. And we have already sent an email to Blue Cross Blue Shield asking them to house this surgery. She said, but Mr. Plemons, you need to understand, we have no authority over Blue Cross Blue Shield. They've still got to read the email and then do what they got to do. I said, wait a minute, Vivian, if you don't mind, I've got Blue Cross Blue Shield on speed dial. Let's just add them to the call. And I hit a button. Long story short, I had the doctor's office. I, the next thing you know, I had the doctor's office, the hospital, and two insurance companies all on one phone call. And I began to explain to them. And you could hear the Blue Cross Blue Shield lady in the background. And she's on a keyboard. And she is lighting that keyboard up. I mean, you could hear it. Was, she, her fingers were flying over that keyboard. And she said, Mr. Plemons, 
I have got good news for you, my friend. I said, what is that, ma'am? She said, because they sent this email and asked us to do this. She said, you don't have to go through our approval process. It's automatically approved. And she said, and oh, by the way, it's covered 100%. She had the surgery, and when the bill came in the mail, this is what it said. Total bill, $684,000. Total payments and adjustments, $684,000. Your responsibility, zero. Can I tell somebody, you have to endure personal crisis. You have to endure distress. Come on, we are distressed. We are, come on, surrounded. We got trouble on every hand. Hey, but we're not down. We're not in despair. We're not. How? Why? Because my foot. day looks like I got to preach again at six o'clock but is it okay if I just take my time and preach this now because there's one more thing I won't tell you about or two everybody say we got this we must endure for the better, lack of a better term dry time it's not always general conference bro it's not always camp meeting it's not always youth camp come on we don't always have come on a multi-church gathering where the rivers are flowing deep to swim in sometimes we're high-sided on the desert side come on sometimes the brooks dried up so You're right. You're right. Yeah. Uh -huh. there's a king in the old testament first kings chapter 18 his name is uh ahab and there's a prophet named elijah this prophet and this king have history. They know each other. And this king had set out a death squad. He put a, he put a, a bounty on Elijah's head. And, uh, and so everything was good because Elijah was hanging out at the widow woman's house. Nobody knew where he was at. But one afternoon, God said, okay. This jigs up, big boy. <laughs> you threw eating on a handful of meal and a, oh, see y'all. I'm sorry, I don't have time to tell that story. <laughs> well, maybe I do. <laughs> He's on the mountaintop, and God says, "Get down to Zarephath. I have prepared a widow woman there to sustain thee." Now, wait a minute. You talk about a setup. God said, "I have prepared a widow woman." And in my mind, I'm going, oh, I hope she's got a Mercedes that her husband left behind for me to drive. Come on, she got money in the bank, corn in the crib. Is anybody going to help me? And when he gets on location, she's on her last meal. Can you talk about pressure? Can you imagine how his ministry would have ended? If God hadn't done that miracle, he would be known as the prophet that will eat your last cake and watch you die. So he's lived for three years and six months on a handful of meal on the miracle provision of God. He gets to the mountain and there's 450 prophets of Baal running, jumping, acting crazy. He has them all killed. Their blood's still running in the crack gown. And he tells Ahab, hey, it's fixing to rain. From the top of Mount Carmel, it becomes very obvious to him, God, if you don't send some rain, this is my last hilltop. They're not going to let me off this mountain breathing, God, if it ain't raining when I come down. But watch. The old prophet. Now, he must have been a thin fella. I'm just saying. The Bible said he stuck his head between his knees. I've tried. Not going to happen. I can't act that one out for you. I'm so sorry. But he started praying. 
And then he said to his servant, Then he said to his servant, Go look out towards the sea and tell me what you see. No pun intended. Can I tell you that it didn't rain the first time? Or the second time? Or the third time? Or the fourth time? Oh, somebody help me now. Or the fifth time? Or the sixth time? I'm just wondering if there's anybody in here that it would, would have gone back that seventh time. Come on, am I the only one that sees the redundancy unfurling there on that mountaintop? I mean, by now, I'm just trying to help you now, Pastor. By now, he's hoarse. By now, he's lost his voice. By now, he don't have anything left. He has prayed himself out. And it's still as dry as a powder keg on that mountaintop. But after the seventh look, here comes this little servant fella. This, I call him preacher wannabe. What, why else do you think he followed that preacher up the hill? <laughs> oh, I don't have time to preach that either. i got to move on. When he comes back the seventh time, this is the coolest part of this story right here. If you get this, we could probably all go get us a hamburger somewhere. But he comes back and he says to Elijah, Master, I saw a cloud. I saw a cloud about the size of a man's hand. And the old prophet didn't need anything else. You know what he said? Quick, in a hurry, and don't you slack. Go down there and tell Ahab if he wants to get off this mountain, he better go now because I hear the sound of abundance of rain. The storm is coming. Now, have you ever wondered why a cloud the size of a man's hand would, 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 would birth such a dynamic, faithful, bold declaration? Well, pay attention to the details. He's been eating for three years and six months with a woman and her son on a hand. That head sized cloud was three years and six months of every raindrop that should have fallen, every cloud that should have come forth. God has restrained every drop out of the heavens for three years and six months, and He's getting ready to dump it on that mountain. I've come to tell somebody if you will endure your dry day, the rain, I said the rain, I said the Holy Ghost rain. Enough, you say? I understand. But there's one more. We must endure personal weakness. This life is frail. I've already told you about two life-altering surgeries. We all go through trials and tribulations. I'm just saying, nobody escapes the process. Mm. Whew. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not the wicked. But don't quit there, Bubba. But the Lord shall deliver him out of them all. What are you saying, Brother Plymouth? I'm saying your personal weakness cannot destroy you, cannot take you out. Why? Because in your weakness, Christ said, I am strong. Would somebody let the strength of the Lord, would they let the strength of the Holy Ghost, let the strength of your faith, come on, I am in step with
There's just too many stories to tell, like Samson and David and all the different ones. In fact, I can't find a single figure in all of God's book, save Enoch and Jesus, <laughs> who did not have a massive, major failure. But I found some words of solace in the little, what they call minor prophet Micah's writings. In the seventh chapter, he put his pen to paper and he wrote these words, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemies, for when I fall, I shall arise. And though I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I wish somebody in this room would go ahead and throw your hands up and say, Let the light shine. Lord, let the light shine. Lord, I know you're not going to leave my soul in hell. I know like Job of old, I shall see you and not another. But in my flesh, I shall behold you. I've come to tell somebody in this room, today is the day to not only rise up, but to rise up and endure in step with the Spirit. God said that your path, come on, your steps are ordered of the Lord. Come on, we got to find His steps. I said we've got to find His steps. we got to get in His steps. Once we have persevered through persecution, personal dryness, failures there's one last endurance you stand with me I'm, I'm closing here but we must understand that with all of that preached and I know it's a lot to take in in one afternoon but we must be willing to endure overwhelming obstacles the psalmist David said when my spirit was overwhelmed within me it was in that moment that he knew. Come on. Come on. He knew. Nobody knows like God knows. Come on. What you can handle. What you can take. What you can go through. In the book of Revelations. Revelation chapter 2 verse 12. We find these words and I'm done. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write. These things saith he, which hath a sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works. Everybody say, he knows me. I know where thou dwellest. Whoo! Listen to this now. Even where Satan's seat is, the devil has a perch from which he sits in observation. And God said, I know where you're going. I know where you're staying. And I know where your enemy is. Wait, wait, wait. And thou holdest fast my name. You might have forgot how to walk and talk. Come on, it might have been a while since you prayed through and talked in tongues. Come on, you might have forgot the words to amazing grace. But whatever you did, you did one thing right. You held on to my name. You never quit using my name. You never failed to speak the name. Somebody said, Jesus. Jesus. Thou hast held fast my name and hast not denied my faith even in those days. When Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth, my right-hand man was slain at the foot of Satan's door. But you, my beloved, held true, held firm, Stayed on path. Stayed on target. Come on, stay. Even at the seat of Satan, he says, there's a living, fire-breathing 
apostolic church that will not stagger and will not stall and will not fall. Why? My foot hath held his steps and my way. We may be in an hour when these overwhelming obstacles stack one upon another. They tell me that they've already got five more plagues planned to be loosed upon the United States of America. Now, I'm not telling you how to turn. I'm talking about a guy that sits in the UN. He said they've got them lined up one after the other. Monkey pox wasn't much of a hit, but the next one's right behind. You just wait. It's coming. And they're going to keep letting it out. Why? Because they know that fear is the number one controlling agent. My foot hath held his steps. His... They did everything they could to absolutely shackle the one God apostolic faith, but we beat them at the Supreme Court. They tried every way in the world to kick prayer, and we beat them in the Supreme Court. Right now, they're doing everything they can. Somebody help me now. To destroy our children's mind through lust. But we're getting ready to beat them in the Supreme Court. The case is already moving through the ranks. You can say what you want to about our President Trump. He wasn't perfect and I wouldn't even begin to try to make him perfect. But God used that man to give us a wall and a bastion of protection in our Supreme Court. And it takes a long time to get there, and you got to persevere. Come on, you got to fight like. So today, I rise. And I close with these words 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. We are troubled on every side. But we're not distressed. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. I'm just reading down to your book now. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Oh, we've been cast down, but not destroyed. Like the writer of Corinthians, I want to say just one more time. My foot. His step. Seek the old path today. As long as Job stayed in step, he could say, he knows right where I'm at. How about it, church? Is it a comfort knowing he knows right where you're at? He knows that boss that's been needling you and pressuring you and making a hostile work environment for you. Come on, he knows that coach, that teacher. Come on, that next door neighbor, that co-worker that's been after you and pressuring you. He kn- you're not doing this by yourself. He's right there. Let me pray for you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, I pray for this body of believers today. God, as we leave this place, I pray that we would be in lockstep one with another, with our hearts fixed, our focused, lasered in. Heaven is our goal the world is our labor field revival is at our fingertips if we just won't quit because he that endureth 
to the end shall save us today Lord save our minds save our emotions save our spirits as David declared restore our soul today God remind us reinfuse us with that courage that never die I will not quit I would not bow spirit let the faith of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego let the faith of Elijah let the faith of David let the faith of the church of Pergamos with hell breathing down her door we're going to hold on to the name Jesus would you speak that name right now if you throw your head back and just